Well, the problem has been underfunding in transport, in development. A lot of the areas of Blackpool have been allowed to run down. I'd say it's just getting worse and worse and worse. You've got violence, non-stop knife crimes. It's a joke. Now, the big story covering all of politics in the next few months, looming over everything, is the upcoming general election. Is it going to be this summer? Is it going to be October? Maybe even January 2025? Frankly, I don't know. But what I do know is that across the north of England, voters will be going to the polls five years on from the dramatic 2019 general election, where large swathes of the north of England switched their allegiance after decades of support for Labour to the Conservatives, putting Boris Johnson into Downing Street in the process. My first stop is the seaside resort of Blackpool, where there will soon be an early electoral test for Keir Starmer and Rishi Sunak. In just a few weeks, there's going to be a by-election in the Blackpool South constituency after its MP, ex-Conservative Scott Benton, was caught by the Times newspaper offering to lobby ministers and table parliamentary questions on behalf of gambling investors. Mr Benton was facing a recall petition with 10% of local voters needing to sign it to force a by-election. This week, though, he belatedly decided to speed up the process by resigning as an MP, meaning there will now be a new vote to replace him. But there is more than just political intrigue, which makes Blackpool interesting, in my opinion. I think it tells a fascinating story about the decline of coastal towns in recent decades and the success or otherwise of the levelling up agenda. So why don't you come with me and we'll find out what's going on in the UK's most popular seaside resort. So it is a wet, drizzly Wednesday morning in Blackpool and I am with uh, Susan Newton from the Lanx Live website. Hi Susan. Hello, thank you so much for having me. Well, it's nice to be joining you here. So tell me about where we are right now. Well, we're in Cedar Square. Um, it's very, very central in Blackpool. And it's, it's quite, it's one of those pockets in Blackpool that's been regenerated in the last decade. Um, you know, we've, we've got the comedy carpet on the front as well that's had a lot of money pumped into it and also more recently the Holiday Inn complex and this is just one of those areas that's very foody as well so Yeah, I, mean, I can see uh, there's a wood-fired pizza, there's a, a wine bar, yeah. there's a trendy chicken shop over there it's pretty, pretty nice Yeah, I mean even one of those owners, the, the chicken shop specifically said that it's sort of Blackpool's answer to the Manchester Northern Quarter Yeah, I can see that, I can yeah. definitely see that and I've also spoken to other cafe owners um, during my work and you know they've said that previously this wasn't ever an area where you could come and have a little nosy round but now you can and it's become a destination. Yeah absolutely. So we are walking from Cedar Square to a, perhaps a less salubrious part of Blackpool but you, you've grown up in this area. Just tell me about sort of your experiences of Blackpool during your life and also as a, as a journalist. Yeah, so I'm sort of from the Far Coast area, so I've always known about Blackpool, had that idea of it. Um, and it, it's one of those areas where everyone's got a preconceived idea of it, everyone sort of thinks they know it. Um, but when you get to the real underbelly of it, it's, it's a very different area. Um, growing up, it's always been a place where you can go to Madame Two Swords, the Tower, Pleasure Beach. It's fantastic as a child, specifically. Um, perhaps a little expensive if you are doing all of those things, particularly during the summer holidays. Um, but growing up, it's always been that sort of area where you go for, you know, friendly people and, and entertainment. Yeah, but obviously Blackpool has its challenges, which I'm sure you've reported on yeah. uh, as a journalist. I mean, what, what are the big issues facing Blackpool as far as you can see? Social housing is a huge one, or should I say lack of social housing. Um, just chatting to people in the street, even if it's on any topic surrounding Blackpool, you'll always go back to that. Um, I think there's a huge private rental market here, um, but obviously, you know, people with low social economic backgrounds, that's a real issue. There's also a big issue with houses that are ridden with mould. Um, again, that's, you know, another issue with the private rental market. Um, so, you know, more social housing, it's crying out for that, really. Um, Anti-social behaviour is another one as well. 
uh, recently did a story on that talking to some business owners and you know there are sections of Blackpool that are sort of overrun with people who take it upon themselves to cause a bit of chaos, smashing windows um, there was a number of smashed windows in some of the cafes just where we were um, so those are problems I think you'll get in a lot of areas in 2019, Blackpool had eight of the country's 10 most deprived neighbourhoods and 12 of the top 20. People in Blackpool also earn less than in any other local authority area in the country, with an average full-time worker in the town bringing in just £532 a week, nearly £120 less than the northwest average. And between 2020 and 2022, Blackpool had a total of 120 drug-related deaths the highest rate of any local authority in England and Wales. So I am in Blackpool Town Centre, standing outside the uh, Hounds Hill Shopping Centre, and I really want to know what people living in Blackpool think about what it's like here, for all the challenges and opportunities. So I'm going to ask a few people, do a bit of a vox pop. To be honest, it's just a joke. Like, you've got people on the streets, sitting there begging. It's just a run-down place, to be honest. I'd say it's just getting worse and worse and worse. You've got violence, non-stop knife crimes with kids and stuff like that. It's a joke. And what would you like to see that would make it better, do you think? Uh, I think, honestly, just a few more places to open up, like, to go and do more things. There's not much here you can go and do. You've got the amusement parks or fish and chip shops. Other than that, there's not really anything around. Do you think Blackpool's got better over the years or has it got worse? I've been here 10 years now and when we first came here it was really good. The last three years I'd say with antisocial behaviour it's gone a bit bad but before that there weren't really much. Um, where I live on my particular street there was a lot of it. The police have clamp clamped down on it so some of it has gone now. But yeah, it's just really antisocial behaviour. I think that's got, got a lot worse. Yeah. You know, the youths, but there's not really much for them to do. So the anger around on streets and stuff like that. But in the short space of time we've been here, we've been, we've been quite heightened, actually, by the way they're tackling the problems. And it has got problems, there's no question about it. And, and I do say that the selection of MPs that we have at the moment are tackling this in a robust and also human manner. So, you know, I applaud what they're doing and I think people should support them. So when you say the, the tackling the, the problems, what, what do you think the problems are in Blackpool? Well, the problems has been underfunding in transport, in development. A lot of the areas of Blackpool have been allowed to run down um, without any seeming encouragement to do something about it. And they're tackling it and that's got to be good. In some deprived areas of the Blackpool South constituency, like Waterloo Road, just a few hundred yards from the thrills and excitement of Blackpool Pleasure Beach, life is hard and poverty is widespread. But there are some local businesses offering a lifeline to locals who've fallen on hard times. I went to visit one to see how they're getting on. She's a lovely girl, you know. She is, I can tell. I'm one of her customers. <laughs> you <Right. back> <laughs> Sarah, so, tell me about the South Shore Pit Stop Cafe. South Shore Pit Stop Cafe is a community cafe. I have an ethos of community spirit. You arrive as a customer, you leave as a friend. What we want to do is build it up to a place where people feel safe, where people can get advice and come and talk because it's all about expressing what they need and how they can get support. So it's more than just a cafe really? Yes, more than just a cafe. We promote mental health. We have a paid forward board which is designed to help anybody, not just the homeless, but anybody at all that could be having a tough day. We promote... How, how does the pay it forward board work? So the pay it forward board is designed, anybody can come in and ask if they can pay for a meal onto the board. We will then put a star on there. It will tell you what meal is available and customer, anybody can come in and just take that star off and, and just bring it to the counter. We don't ask questions, we don't ask anybody to prove that they've got no money. What we do ask is, are you okay, do you need to talk, is there anywhere we can guide you to, is there any food banks, is there anything that you need to talk about, just to make sure that their mental health well-being is, is okay as well. And you get a lot of people using that service? We do, we get a lot of people using the service. Um, more than I thought we would and a lot of our payments onto the board are from general members of the public so we do get a lot of people using it. So you're clearly an important part of the 
the community of Waterloo. Right. Like, tell me a bit about this this area. Like, what what what's the area like? Waterloo Road, in particular, is not what it used to be. Bond Street is not what it used to be. Um, I've not lived in Blackpool all my life, but I've been here 14 years, and I've seen it deteriorate massively. In, in what way? Um, high crime, buildings becoming very depleted, very uh, run down. Um, drugs, alcohol, they're the main things, however the increase of possible rents on shops and the increase in, in council taxes are preventing businesses from trying to, to open and flourish to bring us back, to, to make us thrive. So what needs to happen for areas like Waterloo Road to, to thrive? We need for it to be cleaned up, we need um, the community to pull together but we also need councils and the government to listen um, and not just spend money in one area. Spread it across the entirety of Blackpool, not just one specific area. Holidaymakers will not come around here when they're looking at the rundown buildings. They want to be somewhere nice and pretty and Waterloo Road and Bond Street doesn't show nice and pretty. In the last few years in Blackpool, there's obviously been a Conservative government, you've got a Conservative MP or you have the last few years and they talk about levelling up and the tens of million pounds that's going in to Blackpool and areas like Waterloo Road to make it better. Do, do, you, do you feel like you've noticed any change because of that? Okay, um, I actually think that Scott Benton has done an awful lot in the area. Um, I it's made a mistake, he's, there's things that have happened uh, that maybe shouldn't have happened but he has done an awful lot in this area and been very visual so people can see him. I've actually had Diane Mitchell who's a counsellor, I've had Simon Cartmel who's a counsellor, I've had Scott Benton, all in the cafe, all at the same time and we've done drop-in surgeries in the cafe for our local community to see what we can, what needs to be done to help, what can we do about the crime and how can we sort it out. So you might vote for him again if, if there's a by-election and he, he stands? I don't want a by-election. I think it's, to be fair, we're going to get a general election. So what is the point in having a by-election? It's more funds being spent. When them funds need to be used elsewhere, why use them that £300,000 when we're going to have a general election? Despite its deep-seated social problems, Blackpool is the undisputed seaside home of showbiz glamour. Just ask the cast of Strictly Come Dancing, who make their annual pilgrimage to perform at its Tower Ballroom. And now a new £13 million museum, called Showtown, has opened to put a spotlight on the town's glory days of entertainment, featuring items like a vintage sooty puppet and Stan Laurel's hat. I went to take a look at how it's getting on. Well, it's been at least 10 years in the making, 150 years worth of history that we're celebrating here. Uh, but it's been a creation of collaboration between storytellers, performers, those that have been involved in the entertainment business, in circus, in dance, and those that are involved in the development of the Seaside Resort, all telling their stories as a great collective and being shared with, with colleagues here at the Showtown Museum and then worked on with fabulous museum designers uh, who have reimagined the way that museums work to create something really quite sensational for Blackpool. It reminds me of time spent with my, my grandparents and my parents, but it also brings it right up to date in terms of how my children are grown up in the area. So, um, you know, there's artefacts in there that relate to Sooty and Sweep and Orville, which were my generation, but there are things to do for younger people as well. So it, it really reflects entertainment through the years with Strictly Come Dancing, being some of the most modern, taking it back to Northern Seoul, which is still highly celebrated uh, within Blackpool, to elements of circus, which is alive every day in Blackpool in terms of the, the Tower Circus. So there are memories for me that will be shared with others, but there really is something for everybody in terms of stimulating historic thoughts, but also going out and still enjoying today. Now, when we got here, there was a, a queue uh, out the door to get in and see the attractions. I mean, how are people reacting to it in the few days that it's been open so far? Well, I genuinely have to say I have never seen so many smiling faces in my life. Uh, the reaction, the response so far has been absolutely phenomenal. People coming through the doors, not necessarily knowing what to expect, uh, but then coming out and just being enthralled by what they've seen within. It's a real place of fun. It's a real place of celebration. And I think it really puts a spotlight back on Blackpool 
in terms of that pride and proudness that, that local people have of the area. Now, we know Blackpool has its problems, they're well documented, but there's a lot of regeneration work going on. How does Showtown fit in with the wider regeneration of Blackpool? Yeah, you're, you're right to, to, to say that. There is a lot going on at the moment. Um, we've got a new cinema that's opening uh, at the end of this week. But for us at Showtown, this has been a £13 million investment. And that investment has come um, hugely from uh, central government funds, a pooling of funds from the National Lottery Heritage Funds as well. Um, and also from uh, local contributors and, and uh, grant providers. So that's, that's a in capital investment into the town. But what we're expecting is for um, revenue into the town to rise by about £15 million a year because of Showtown. So the additional people it's bringing in, the additional length of stay that it's giving as well, um, and uh, you know money out to those related businesses in the area. So it is transformational, but it's one of the pillars that is helping Blackpool redevelop at the moment. And so the programme goes on. Uh, there's, there's a lot of work that's happening in Blackpool, whether that be through business and, and office development, or continuing with our long-lasting legacy of entertainment but is that there's a real catalyst at the moment. Blackpool last year experienced 20 million visits. It's a really, you know, significant uh, driver to uh, our economy in Blackpool, the, the visitor economy. Um, so yes, if, if Showtown can um, encourage a share of that to come through, we should have a fabulous first season. Despite the tens of millions of pounds in government cash going in to regenerate Blackpool, it's still the Labour-run Blackpool Council responsible for making things happen on the ground. And when I went to chat with their leader, Lynn Williams, at their HQ in the newly redeveloped area around the town's main railway station, it was clear she has big plans for the town's future. We hear quite a lot about Blackpool being at the, the wrong end of league tables for things like life expectancy and you know drugs deaths and things like that. As council leader, you're obviously very proud of Blackpool. Is it quite painful to, for the town to be, in many people's eyes, sort of have, have so many problems? Obviously, we, you know, we have challenges in Blackpool and, you know, leader of the council, but, you know, this is my hometown, you know, and the council's priority, all of the regeneration work is, is you know, is for our people, is about creating better jobs and opportunities and housing, housing, housing. We know that a lot of those health inequalities, addiction, domestic abuse, poor educational attainment is linked with poor housing and that has been our absolute obsession over the last 10 years, which resulted, we're really pleased to say, you know, in the announcement the Secretary of State made um, at the Convention of the North of 90 million. Most importantly, that I think that's a, a recognition of, um, from central government that you know, they're going to work with us to resolve this, this issue because, you know, that it is so important. And, you know, all the other work around from public health, you know, we're doing some amazing stuff to work with our people and to improve those health, health inequalities, you know, because that's absolutely this council's priority. So the £90 million that Michael Gove has announced for uh, regenerating the housing stock in Blackpool, how big a deal will that be for the town? Like how much can you achieve with what he has promised? It, I mean, it, it's fundamental and it's more, obviously the 90 million, is, you know, it is f fantastic and very welcome to have, but it's more about that relationship now that we have with Homes England. Um, because, you, uh, you know, if you go to the top of the tower and you'll, you can see how dense our housing, housing is. So you, it's about having a different relationship with Homes England who understand that, you know, we need to, you know, renovate and repair. And you know, we don't have green land, brown field to, to, you know, extend and build houses on. So we, you know, we, it's, a, it's a case of how we work and how we alter that housing. So, you know, eight years ago, the council borrowed money and set up... <coughs> wholly owned council company, Blackpool Housing Company. So over the last seven and a bit years, we've been buying up, you know, hostels, HMOs, and converting them to good quality accommodation. And that is now over 700 homes have been created. So, and we know that it works. We know that that has a, an immediate impact on, on communities, but we need to do that a lot quicker and on a much bigger scale. Whenever I'm talking to political leaders in the North, I hear about how uh, the, 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 the swinging budget cuts that local authorities like yours have had to endure in the last 10, 15 years. And, you know, so many of them are, are struggling to fulfil their, their basic services as functions. I mean, how much can a council like yours do, given those funding constraints? Are, are you reliant on having to work with other organisations like central government to achieve the aims that you want? Well, I mean, we, you know, 80% of... of 
Blackpool's budget is on statutory services. So, you know, you've got sort of about 16% non-discretionary spend. So you're looking at all of those stuff, the preventative stuff that you would want to do more of when you talk around sort of, you know, health issues. Um, you know, we've been phenomenally successful, um, you know, working with government in, in terms of applications, but it's a bidding round that, that shouldn't happen. And I think there's an unfair advantage, you know, for, um, for the, the, the South, um, because it, there's more economic it's easy to show economic outcomes in terms of the value of land, etc. So, and you know that all those details that are in the green book. So, you know, whilst we've done really well with that, um, with the applications and funding bids and and you know leveling up, which is bids round one and two, you know that that shouldn't be how essential services or how local government should be funded. Um, it shouldn't be one year settlement. We should have multi year settlement that enables us to plan. You wouldn't run a business this way. You know, in Blackpool, I'm very proud that we've been able to continue to set a budget. We're continuing to, to deliver, you know, without those cuts to services, without people losing their jobs um, and prioritising and delivering for the most vulnerable. Um, you know, and that's what we will continue to do, but also, you know, continue to be very loud and clear that local government, local services, public services need to be better funded. Now, I know there are a lot of people in Blackpool who really care about the future of the town. We've been speaking to them today. For those people who want a optimistic, vibrant future for Blackpool, what, what examples of things going on in the town can you give them to give them some confidence that Blackpool is moving in the right direction? I think, you know, uh, for, you know, for the town centre, you know, that, that is you you know to establish having those all those jobs it's about businesses and you know the all round because 22,000 people you know in, in our town are reliant on the hospitality and tourism industry it's a massive you know employer you know into for people being able to pay their rent and, and pay their mortgage um what this opportunity of, of this the leveling up partnership does um will enable us and the night part of the uh, small part of the 90 million will be to set up master plans for the north and the south of the town um, you know, to work, have consultations and understand how people want to live in those areas and, you know, ensure that we get it right because we, we have to listen to, you know, the residents. They have to have a very clear, you know, impact on, on, on those plans that how we develop across, across the town. So, you know, there's lots of, of stuff coming. We've got the new IMAX cinema, but, uh, you know, uh, opening a, within the town centre, that vibrancy of the town centre. Um, you know, there's, there's lots going on. Um, and, and, you know, you went to Showtown, which is free for all our residents and, and our schools. You know, we're really proud of that. And yeah, I hope that, you know, the residents will, will, will appreciate and enjoy all of that and also be properly engaged you know, when we come around to do the consultation about the master planning for their areas.